When you study carbon and climate change or water or even landfills, very soon you're at the built environment. Are we the world's biggest industry? You could debate, but it's enormous. We're going to have 135 billion things connected to the internet by 2030. We consume 594 terawatt hours of energy every year. So digital infrastructure equates to 2.4% of all the energy that we consume on the planet. Platform Equinox operates 237 data centers across 65 metros in 27 countries. It's a central nervous system of the economy. Everybody is connected to it. Everybody is using it. Therefore, any progress that we can make has a multiplier effect throughout all of the industries that are leveraging that infrastructure. When we become the greatest experts, we forget to ask the most basic questions. We're a $14 trillion ecosystem that is somewhat disconnected. Looking into the future, it will only accelerate. In our industry, $7 billion of investment in recent years has been driven by the preferences of the customer. We're about to go through rebuilding the supply chain. That's going to happen in the next 10 years. And if we miss it this time, I don't know how you turn that around 10 years from now. Every time you're interacting in any way with IT, there is a server somewhere that is consuming power and it is living in a building. These 30, 40 times the size of a football field buildings contain computers that do all the processing and serve all of these applications that people have across the globe. That's just one building. And then there's a campus. There could be 20 buildings that are that size on a campus. They require energy and a lot of construction materials. We can really make a difference in how we deliver these facilities and then operate them with minimal waste and a wise use of the resources needed. You look at who's buying steel, aluminum, concrete, it's the data center industry. They're the biggest customers on earth. You know, outside of nation states doing infrastructure projects, you know, they're the ones that can have an impact on, you know, can all of those materials be made in a way with a lower embodied footprint? We can't ignore the emissions from the harder to abate sectors. 15% from steel and cement alone. We're never going to have carbon capture or you know direct air capture technologies enough to get rid of all those emissions and just leave them the way that they are now. So remember, a data center is consuming a tremendous amount of steel for the shell, but the inside of all those buildings are also consuming steel for all of the racking that's supporting the servers. In really all of our electrical projects, we have an extensive amount of metals with data data centers, that's where you're going to see the most aluminum and copper used in the cables and conductors to move electricity and also move all the air. Because of the fact that concrete is everywhere, it has a relatively significant environmental impact. So if cement were a country, it would be the third largest emitter after China and the United States. It doesn't matter if it's the dirt, to the concrete, to the copper, to the steel to the servers that are going inside of it, to the fiber that's actually connecting to the towers. Every aspect of digital infrastructure needs to be thought of in a sustainable way. Carbon emissions are the biggest proxy for greenhouse gas emissions. A framework was established that put these emissions into scopes and started to tell companies and agencies and governments how they could start to report these emissions. So there's scope one, two, and three when it comes to carbon emissions accounting. Scope one are owned emissions at plants that are being processed and combusted into the atmosphere. Scope two is simply when I consume electricity, there's a carbon associated with that, but it's really the utility that's burning the carbon. I'm just consuming the electricity. Back in the late 90s, we were looking at data centers and their impact on the environment around them. What would be the best way for us to capture an efficiency improvement in a data center? Power usage effectiveness, or PUE. In 2006, we went public with this metric and it completely transformed the industry. By 2017, we achieved 100% renewable energy matching for every megawatt hour of energy that we consume. The next objective is by 2030 to do that around the world, seven by 24 carbon-free energy. We're at 66% today, but the next eight years between now and 2030 are gonna be much bigger challenges. Scope three is where things get really interesting. This is where you really start talking about all of the indirect emissions resulting from the operations of your company. See, the problem that keeps arising with a lot of these efforts to decarbonize is they're not thinking broad enough. 80% plus of the emissions that corporations are now reporting are in that scope three bucket. It's the things that they're purchasing and the emissions that are used to make the things that they're purchasing. Keep in mind, one industry scope one emissions is another industry scope three emissions. 
The impact of Scope 3 literally is a game changer in all aspects of how we live, how we operate, what we do. That is the next major part of where we could be doing more. You must be vulnerable to succeed. There is no path to success in construction without people who haven't worked together, breaking bread and being vulnerable and say, how do we help each other win? We have to move much faster. We have to do much more. How can we thrive and still thrive for the rest of time? I want to know where the raw materials are coming from. I want to have a conversation with the mill. How are they pipeline planning? Where are they getting their materials from? The more segmented or isolated we are in business and in our industries, I think the slower our growth and the larger our ecological footprint. So the Industry Association iMasons recently announced an initiative called the Climate Accord. The Climate Accord is specifically taking a look at carbon accounting. When I build a building, what is the carbon that went into the concrete of that building, the steel of that building, all of the equipment that's going in, and organizing ourselves so that we can have the right standards in place so that we can work on managing it and measuring it and ultimately reducing it. We got 161 companies to jump in and say, we're all in it to win it. The more in it, the more unification. The more unification, the faster we're going to be able to get there. I know that the steel industry has a great relationship with the automotive industry, and we need to have that kind of similar relationship with the digital industry as well. What's the greatest model for labels? It's the nutritional labels on our food. In the building industry, we'll have our equivalents. My perspective is that we actually have the methods and the standards to actually get to these embodied carbon emissions. We don't need to create that. We need to align to it. And we need a simple mechanism, like a carbon label, that allows us to be able to get to that data and refine it and make it better and better and better. Everybody around it, we can move. So there's 30% of manufacturers of steel in the US right now that may not even understand their own environmental impacts. Same for concrete. So we've got probably right now 8 to 10% of the US market of concrete that's actually disclosing their emissions. The burden is on the data center industry to explain to our value chain what the future looks like. There is no path for the steel industry here in the US, zero, to not be on a decarbonization path. We'd be anxious to work with the data center industry to help map out a course that will reduce carbon emissions in their supply chain, producing the particular grades of steel that most effectively meet their needs. There's no one industry that can achieve the goals that we have here today. We need to be at the table together and we need to have transparency between the digital market space and the materials market space. That is necessary. What is the single answer to the climate change problem? And the reality is there is no one answer. In fact, it's a lot of little activities that all need to happen that can make a tremendous impact. When it seems like the odds are against you, that's when everyone does their best work. It's really about getting together, solving what everyone thinks is impossible, but making it possible. The digital infrastructure industry has a couple of choices. They can either be the great equalizers or the great dividers, the great givers or the great takers. I want to be on the positive side of that. We all live on this planet. We all have to do the right thing for not just us, but for our families and our friends. They have to live on this planet when we're gone. We have a responsibility. So what's yours? Mm -hmm.